appreciate that. We appreciate you opening up your doors and welcoming us into your homes as we do the same here in downtown Atlanta. All right. Well, I hope the weather is good for you today for my trip to Puerto Vallarta tonight. Uh, I'm getting tired of Los Living Room. That one fell flat. All right. That's all right. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta start somewhere. While we're all celebrating camping outside today, today, March 27th, for those of you who don't know, is also National Joe Day. Someone say Joe. Yes. Today we are celebrating having a cup of the Joe with your Joe's, Joe's, Joey's, Joseph. Oh, and you better not forget Josephine, uh, Jody, and Jolene. You know, it's actually National Spanish Paella Day, too. Maybe we should make some paella for them later. What do you think? Well, uh, you know you're quarantined so long when uh, someone is getting so deep into their closet that they're making bread from scratch, that machine Nana gave them from last millennium. Well, uh, we hope that you all are enjoying your time, hoping we can break up this baking with a little bit of more to entertain, but, uh, you know, they took friends off in Netflix in 2020, and think that they caused this, but the world since then just hasn't been right. Feels like hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year. Ravens! Nevertheless. Every uh, headline, it seems like, is absolutely just making is making a punchline. So here's uh, one more. I don't know if you guys heard today, but Dyson, the manufacturer of vacuums, they shifted uh, production to help out, as many people have done. We're going to highlight some of them today, folks that have uh, stepped up. But Dyson started making ventilators, 10,000 ventilators. So now I guess they make products that both suck and blow. Nevertheless, we're going to start with our first performance here. Uh, we've got some musical talent all the way from across the pond in sunny Atlanta. And uh, Richmond Punch, over to you.
quarantine for you guys. Woo. Can you tell us how to breathe out here <laughs> inside? Okay, my name is Richmond Punch. Check me out as well online and I'm so happy to be a part of this camp quarantine. Raise money for the cost. Okay, a lot of people need supplies, help. I, I, I'm so happy to be a part. All right, well I was just going to do a nice little meditation here for you all. I know it's a stressful time right now. So if everyone can just close your eyes for a second. And start to take some deep breaths in through your nose and some O and up exhales. And I'll do these with you. So I'm watching. So everybody close your eyes. Breathe in through your nose. Open mouth exhale. Beautiful. Give me two more. Inhale through your nose. And open mouth exhale. Release all that tension. Last one together, breathe in, fill up your lungs, fill up your belly with all that beautiful oxygen. And exhale, nice and slow. Beautiful, I want you to keep your eyes closed here. We're gonna just go into our little meditation here. So I want you to just imagine how you feel. You feel the rise of your chest as you inhale and how you feel as you exhale. And then start to think of all of your senses. How do you feel? How do you, what do you see? I want you to envision a nice golden light as you have your eyes closed. And then I want you to come to your senses. What do you smell? Do you smell the nice breeze from the trees? What do you hear? Do you hear the birds chirping maybe? Start to come to all of your senses. What do you feel? And then what do you taste? Just focus on those feelings for a moment here. And focus on your breath and come into the present moment. And then as you do that, I want you to think of your own mantra. It can be something like, I am powerful, I'm strong, or even I'm not my mind, I'm not even my body. Just focus on your breath as you repeat that mantra. Just stay here with and just breathe. And then slowly come back to feeling your breath again. Take a deep inhale in through your nose. Open mouth, exhale, let it all go. Start to feel again as your chest rises towards the sky and falls back down to the earth. Come to that present moment. And then slowly come back to your senses again. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? What do you taste? What do you smell? And then slowly flutter your eyes open. 
and take a deep breath in. Open mouth, exhale, let it all go. Hopefully that was a little relaxing. I know these are some stressful times. So please continue to meditate on your own in the mornings, in the evenings, do whatever feels good. Um, and if you want to follow me or do some more yoga or meditation with me virtually, I'm in Atlanta. Here is, I don't know if you could see my information. Maybe it's backwards. But anyways, it's at Fit Yoganesh on Instagram. Hey everyone, I'm Mike. Uh, this is my girlfriend, Kendra. Hi guys. Uh, we do acro yoga, and so we're going to show you a couple cool acro yoga poses that you can do at home if you have a quarantine partner. Um, and we're specifically choosing ones that are therapeutic today. Um, so these are going to be really, really good for the people who are sitting at home, hunched over, working on your computer, uh, maybe not as good of a standing desk as you might have in the office. Um, these are also good if you are camping and hiking, and after a long hike, it's very decompressing for the spine. Um, you ready, babe? Yeah. Let's do it. Can you hear us over okay over here? Yep. Cool. Um, so I'm putting some, uh, a mat under my back. You can use a yoga mat. You know, anything that's just a little bit softer than a hard floor. Um, so I lay my back and then pick my feet up to 90, um, and they should go right around to the flyer's waist. Then I'm going to turn, so you can notice how my, uh, my legs come up 90 and then there's a 90 degree, uh, at my knees. Then I turn my feet out, uh, and they should go right along with the flyer's hips. So Kendra's the flyer, I'm the base. Um, and you can tell if you're in the right space just by having the flyer bend forward a little bit. And they should, be, should be right where she starts to bend forward. Um, so now I keep pushing there. She bends forward. Um, and I, I take her hand for safety. But we'll actually skip her hand and come down until I get to her shoulders. But as soon as I feel her shoulders, I'm going to rock my legs back. So I'm not even extending. I'm just rocking back and then pushing straight. Um, once you get your legs straight, um, this pose becomes very easy. You can release the shoulders. Um, if I'm a little bit too far that way, it's hard. If I'm too far this way, it's hard. But uh, it's called bone stacking. So all her weight, she could fly me um, as long as her legs are straight. Um, and so just this simple pose right here is really decompressing for the spine. Um, and so you can sit in this pose for two or three minutes. Kendra, how does it feel? Oh, that feels great. Um, um, stretchy. Yeah, the main thing to think of as the flyer, the flyer just relaxes her upper body and keeps her legs heavy. So her legs being heavy gives me the shelf that allows me to really hold her, um, makes her really nice and safe. Um, and then if you want to take, you know, there's lots of things you can do from here. Um, I'll just show one. So you take the flyer's hand and she interlocks her fingers behind my neck, keeping her legs heavy. I then use my feet to stretch her away. So I push away with my straight legs and we breathe them together. The flyer even looks at me, take a deep breath in. And then exhale. How does that feel? That feels great. I got a couple cracks up. Nice. And then when you're ready to come out of this, take the flyer's hands and just start to push her upper body up as you let her feet come to the ground. So that's move number one. Um, move number two, flyer stands behind the base, uh, her feet should be, her heels should be right around my, the top of my head. Um, and I grab onto her ankles. Um, and then I look how I get the, my back off the ground because I'm reaching up as high as I can. Um, so I get the upper, upper back and then I touch her my toes and she starts to lean into that. Uh, a little bit of a trust thing there. Um, and as she starts to lean, I take her weight and I push up with my hands. Um, and so here, you'll you actually go past 90 degrees with the legs because if we're at 90, her weight's still behind my head. Here, her weight isn't actually on my feet. It's between my feet and my hands. So we come up just forward until, until a comfortable spot, legs straight, arms straight, um, and, then, um, and then just kind of rest here and 
while you're kind of doing like what you're doing? I'm just relaxing, stretching my arms open so I get a nice, good back bend and chest stretch. It's really nice after a day working at the computer. Yeah, if you see our arms are really open, um, that really lets me work on her back and her hips. And I can just sit here and her body will just start to fall and crack into place. And if she moves her arms like that to make it feel even better. Um, uh, it's called high low. I heard another crash. There. <laughs> yeah. And then when you're ready to come out, um, just start to bend your elbows so that her feet come to your head, above your head, and give her a little push so that she stands to her feet. So those are two fun little acro yoga poses. Um, should we show the little spinning one? Do we have room here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so those are two that you can do at home. Here's one that. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't recommend doing quite at home right now, but you know, we'll just show a little, show a little something, something. Can you do the first one again? So that's acro yoga. Um, if you want to learn more, or, you know, see more acro stuff, my Instagram's acro jedi, uh, J E D I. out to you guys because I know that this is a difficult time for, for everyone. Uh, I wanted to address a few things, a couple of common concerns amongst my patients. And I wanted to arm you with some tools to say stay healthy and safe during this time. I know you guys have all heard a lot about social distancing and hand washing over the last few weeks, so I won't belabor those points. Really what I'm hoping to do is focus on you and your experience of this unusual, unprecedented challenge. One of the things I wanted to focus on was um, how we're interpreting the news. The news can be frightening. And every day, every day it seems like we're hitting some new record or some new you know, other caseload is building up. But remember that these numbers are to help humans understand kind of what's going on and quantify things. Although we are hearing a lot about these cases and the milestones, I think that the current situation is um, expected. Re remember that statistics are complicated. Um, they can be influenced by lots of things, the person who's collecting them, but really these days, what I think the major factor is how our, our testing capability is ramping up. So although our, our number of cases is going up, I don't think that's unexpected, and actually the number of cases being captured is, is good news because that means we're, we're having um, more realistic uh, statistics to represent what's going on. With that being said, I would you know, listen to what you think is helpful for you to understand the situation. Um, the things that would worry me as a physician and public health professional would be an unexpected number of increased cases or a new mutation in the in the virus that would make uh, forming the vaccination difficult. I haven't come across any of those concerns yet in my research and I hope it stays that way. I'm not going to talk about all the myths about ibuprofen and all of those things. I'll share my contact info and if you have any specific questions just uh, send them on over and I'm happy to uh, get you the information you need. I think the next thing I wanted to address was that, you know, although our response has been imperfect, I really have been overjoyed to see how communities, organizations, nonprofits, and companies come together. You know, Amrit mentioned Dyson stepping up, which I thought was really cool. But in case you missed it, um, some things that I found interesting over the last couple of days was nine out of 10 Americans is practicing social distancing, which, uh, 
was an absolute su surprise to me, but I'm very excited about that. Churches and community centers have volunteered to become makeshift clinics across the country. Elon Musk has stepped up and converted a Tesla factory to produce ventilators. Hospitals and clinics are pushing themselves to use telemedicine to, to reach out to patients with COVID-19 and without it. Remember, there's the normal patients we have day to day um, that we still need to take care of. And I've just been really impressed that the technology has existed, but no one's really had a, uh, an impetus to use it. So I think that that'll be a good outcome of this. And, um, you know, maybe one of my favorites is animal shelters across the country are running out of dogs and cats to foster. So that's pretty cool too. I did want to touch base um, on some things that you can do yourself during this stressful time. I don't think a lot of this will be uh, news to you. And, you know, these are just some of my personal favorites. Don't feel um, obligated to use them by any means. But I would try starting out for those of you who are working from home to try to keep things normal, start a schedule, pick a few things you'd like to focus on. You have a, couple, a little bit more free time, I'm assuming. So you may be able to do some things you've always wanted to do. From a diet perspective, um, I would say that remembering to keep your frequent vegetable intake is uh, important. One way you can do that effectively in a, in a time like this is to use frozen vegetables. Canned vegetables are good, but they, they do tend to have a lot of preservatives. Um, and frozen vegetables have a little bit more nutrition, and they're also pretty affordable and last a long time. Remember to stay hydrated. Hydration is key to fighting any sort of virus, COVID-19, influenza, whatever it is. And, you know, you're, you're still allowed to have fun, but remember that alcohol in moderation is key. Uh, things like that can take out your immune system. And then I want you to support your local businesses, but be careful with uh, ordering all, all that pizza daily. So um, just make sure that you're cooking and it might be a good time for you to expand your horizons. Some of my favorite apps are Epicurious and the Food Network. Um, both have great recipes, healthy, all of that stuff. In terms of exercise, go outside as long as you're practicing social distancing. Try something new, kickboxing, yoga, aerobics, whatever it is. And some of my favorite short apps are Seven Minute Workout, Carrot Fit, which is like a snarky take on a uh, workout app, and Squirk It. And then for those of you who like to see, um, to measure progress, I really like the 30 Day Challenge series. Uh, so there's squats, arm fitness, and those sorts of things. And you can kind of build day by day, and it might actually coincide really well with the, with the recommended quarantine. For meditation and stress, um, Sleep is essential. Sleep helps build your immune system. Come up with a bedtime routine. Start dimming your, your lights maybe an hour before bedtime. The last thing I wanted, the last two things I wanted to touch on were um, you and exercising your, your uh, brain. So Coursera, Khan Academy, for languages, Babbel, Duolingo, all great. And then obviously, at your disposal. And, um, you know, if you're interested in reading about the pandemic, use trusted sources, the CDC, WHO, John Hopkins, those sorts of things, just so you have um, evidence-based information. And then the last really important thing is going to be social health. Um, just trying to reach out to old friends and colleagues. Um, I bet they'd love to hear from you or someone working in essential functions. Take a few minutes to thank them and you know, continue using technology, FaceTime, Zoom to support your interactions and keep supporting wonderful ideas like Camp Spring. I really appreciate all your time. I wish you happiness and health. If you have any questions, like I said before, you can reach me on Instagram or Twitter, but it's Vishal Gray M. Our next guest, I'll let her introduce herself and explain a little bit more about that. Next up, Maria. It's time right now. It's Corona time. Hey, it's Corona time right now. It's Corona time. It's Corona time. Hey, it's Corona time right now. I decided to go to the grocery store in my unicorn costume 
and um, it was fun. I I guess I didn't get the memo. I'm just like, ah, it was a little awkward. But anyway, it was a lot of fun making that video. Um, it's all over Facebook. Uh, I'm just shopping around. Um, in this thing, um, it's definitely not a PSA. Uh, at all, I was just having fun. I'm not encouraging people to wear this at all. It's not supposed to protect uh, protect you against anything. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, that's basically it. Okay. Um, that, that's all I gotta say about this. Um, it was all inspired by the fact that people are trying to protect themselves. Um, I saw this meme of an astronaut uh, protecting himself in space, so I thought of myself doing that in the it. grocery store in my costume. And <laughs> no, all adults, no, no kids. There were no kids. The adults seem to really like it. I've been getting messages from all over uh, the United States. I've gotten some messages from Germany and uh, Malaysia, um, Philippines. I am from Portland, Oregon, and um, it's just been fun. Uh, it's been fun to make a difference, bring a little bit of joy uh, during these times. I really don't have much to say about this, um, but I hope everyone out there stays safe, um, stay home, and take care of each other. Right. Yeah. Just like that, as we had some comedy, yeah, we've got a little, little bit more. Of some of these families over here feel like Bob Saget a little bit on funny of some videos. But take a look at this one. us to join because we've had some fun doing indoor activities with our three-year-old that you can probably hear playing with his cars in the background. Um, since we've had some technical difficulties, I thought I would try to share the video um, of us doing uh, uh, inverse slip and slide this week. But uh, basically, my, my husband had a really good idea to set up an indoor slip and slide this week that we dressed my son up in his, um, in his his swimsuit and his goggles and they had a lot of fun just kind of uh, slip and sliding through the house. We live in a, a pretty small condo so we used some quilts and a plastic sheet with some soapy water. Just made it work. Um, this is this is Declan. He had a lot of fun flying around on it. Yes. Yeah and you can see in the background too we've set up a, a tent for camping night. We like to try and um, <laughs> come up with a lot of fun indoor activities. We've done some indoor movie theaters. Um, we've got some little hockey sticks so we can play indoor hockey. Um, we've just been trying to come up with things to do to uh, keep this one busy and, and burn some energy uh, while we're while we're doing the uh, the quarantine here. So um, I didn't write down my Instagram, but it's K A T Y A M C zero six. Um, we have the video of us uh, slip and sliding throughout the house. Highly recommended. It was a lot of fun. Um, didn't get too messy, which was a good thing. But um, those are some of the ideas, some of the things that we've been doing while we've been inside, uh, just trying to come up with other activities. So um, I'll pass it on to the next person. Thanks for uh, having us. I hope you have some other good ideas.
now I do it for my office to do with someone else. And so thanks for having me on here. Jerry, thank you so much for your time. Now we're going to go a little bit north to Chicago, Illinois with Mr. Chris Bordeaux. Well, I'm just going to introduce Nishu. This is uh, one of my Pomeranians. And then this is, this, whoa, this is Nilo. Nilo is a pet raccoon. They don't like sharing space or time with one another. All right. Okay. <laughs> They're a little agitated. Mishu just ate a sandwich. Uh, he ate an entire sandwich. So I just wanted to say this is really cool listening to everyone's thoughts. Liz is over here hiding. We moved our bed into the living room to make it feel like we are in a hotel. Uh, it's pretty hard to move beds around corners through doorways, so that was an experience. And I'm looking forward to Mason's, uh, Mason's finger show, because he's got some pyrotechnics up there, and all I have is two very angry Pomeranians. Uh, all the best, guys. Stay safe, stay healthy. After all that, I might could use a beverage or two. So I'm going to give a little bit of a call for a delivery here, given we can't go anywhere. Let me call up my friend, Jason. Jason, you there? Let me call up Jason. Jason's there. Jason, you yeah, got man. the spotlight hey, now. Man, talk hey. to me, man. Are you nearby? Are you in Atlanta right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah I got a case full of beer. Just waiting for you. You're to deliver? Sure. You know I'm on live stream, though. Yeah, man. Hey, man. I'm in for it. Okay, how long it will take to be here? I don't know, 10, 20 seconds? seconds? Come on, let's do it. All right. Now, Jason is a good friend of mine. He's a Georgia Tech alum. Um, Jason! Jason! Hey, oh, hey, my goodness. goodness. That was super that was quick. quick. Yeah, that's pretty fast. I just, just, just happened to be walking, walking around, around with a case of with beer, case of beer walking, walking up and down the street. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, well, you're here. Yeah, you want to be yeah, on the street, man? Yeah. Why don't you talk a little about second self real quick? Sure, man. Well, first of all, I need this beer. Thank you, you, yeah, thank, yeah. You, thank you. I'm gonna put these down because they're, they're a lot of weight right now. So, you know, like a lot of the restaurants out there, breweries are also hurting. So, you know, I'm doing having to be a little creative. Well, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, but what we do, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> no, we rely on people coming to us and and buying our and buying beer from us, and also rely on uh, restaurants and everyone doing the same thing. So. So, um, um, our sales are down, so we're getting really creative. creative. We've been, We've been doing, doing a lot of to-go sales for a brewery. We've been, We've been doing a lot of like really dumb videos uh, 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 with our staff, with our staff and, and making, and playlists, making and playlists and everything. And everything. So, it's just, a, you know, it's, just, it's, it's, it's like what you're saying, it's hustle and hospitality, man. We're wearing a new hustle, trying to engage with everyone. And the big thing that we've been doing this week is trying to support the restaurants that have been supporting us all these years. So a lot of the people who so work in restaurants, work they don't have jobs right now. Um, and there's um, a, and great, there's a lot of great, great, great restaurants great here in Atlanta that are becoming food kitchens, kitchens, kitchens or like soup kitchens for uh, people, people in the industry. So we've been providing beer and syrups and other things for them just to spread the love and, you know, because we're all in this together, man. So the only way we're going to get through all this is to work together and have a great time. And if I can bring some good beer along the way, see some great trends, that's what it's all about. Jason, I really so appreciate Thank you so much. I'll say six feet so away. Much. I appreciate that. I but appreciate that. Enjoy these. I will. I absolutely will. Yes. Second cell, they're in the, uh, the uh, Howell Mill. Howell, 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 from Nashville, Tennessee, three hours north here from Atlanta, Central Standard Time. Talk a little bit more about what he's working on. Albron here. Um, I uh, just hanging out here with my buddy Yoda. Um, I'm here to talk to you guys uh, about some mortgages and uh, supposed to make you laugh, but you probably want to get one of those two things. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, just going to kind of give you guys some tips, get you informed of what's uh, what's going on in our world. Um, I, uh, I work in residential mortgages uh, in all 50 states, so I can kind of help out just about anybody out there. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard a lot. There's a lot of crazy things going on with the markets, uh, with the mortgage, with the mortgages, and the real estate world. So I'm trying to 
get you guys uh, up to speed on what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you that uh, that own homes or the ones that are, that are purchasing, we got a lot of really cool stuff coming up. Um, and then I'll also be giving away a few of these hand sanitizers that I just coincidentally happen to have. So I'll, uh, I'll chat about that towards the end. Um, one of the things to kind of look at, uh, you know, mortgage rates are probably at their historic lows. But you can definitely expect in the next couple of weeks for them to hit super, uh, hit super low, right? We're expecting rates in the twos. Can't really quote anything on here, but feel free to reach out to me after the fact on albronhanna.com, uh, and I'll be more than happy to help guide you. Um, one thing that people talk about, the ones that do have mortgages, is you know if you're, if you're losing your jobs or uh, if, you're, if you're getting cut back and furloughed, um, they, your mortgage servicer is going to help you out, right? They're offering to basically uh, put your loan in forbearance or defer the payments for like three, six, nine, or 12 months. Um, one of the key things that you do have to do when you call your mortgage servicer, right? Don't just let it, don't just let it slide and not make your payments. You want to call them. Uh, one of the important key factors is you have to tell them that you've lost income due to COVID, right? If you just tell them that you're losing income, they're going to try to put you on a different plan and they can't exactly guide you that way. So. Really important key steps. Call your servicer. Tell them that you're losing income due to COVID. Um, now, I'm going to take that a step further. This should be only a last resort attempt, right? If you can make your payments, make your payments. Because you don't know what's going to happen, right? If you skip three months of payments, they might come back and say on the, on the fourth month, hey, we're going to want you to make you know, to, to pay off that back pay. So be careful. Know what you're getting yourself into. Um, if you're looking to purchase a house right now, I know not many people are selling things. I know I look at a lot of brokers that are doing virtual tours, so there's a lot of cool things. Reach out to your experts. Um, if you are buying a house, this is the perfect time for it. Rates are super low. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I can answer some detailed questions for you. Uh, again, I'm going to put up this little handy dandy paper. I, I, I apologize, I, I write like a child. Uh, but it's Albron, okay, okay, Hannah. Okay. Dot com. Uh, you can reach out to me that way. And then also, um, I had about 500 of these. I'm down to about 10. And I'm going to be giving these away. Just reach out to me through the website. You don't have to get a mortgage. Just tell me, hey, where do you want me to ship it to? And I'll send it over your way. Um, again, appreciate the time on here. And I uh, hope you guys have a great evening. Wow. All right. We made it through our first hour. Now I can promise you the second hour is full of nothing but music, comedy, some weird variety acts, so maybe a little bit of small, quick crafts, uh, but we're going to catch right back up. So I hope you guys are ready to pump up the volume with me. Next up from Washington, D.C., Mr. Mason Calhoun has two things on his body that are maybe a little bit more popular than both you and me. So take it away, Mr. Mason Calhoun. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks so much, Mason. We appreciate it. While I'm here, another reminder, we are raising money for the Center for Disaster Philanthropy. Uh, if you would like to visit that link right there, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, they're doing great things for, uh, for the, the, the healthcare workers, the people on the front lines, and, uh, and that link is bit.ly funds for disaster right there. Uh, next up, we're gonna head maybe three hours east, uh, excuse me, more like seven hours driving, uh, to New Orleans, Louisiana. Brady Horn, take it away. My name's uh, Brady Horn. Uh, I am, uh, I guess I'm next. It's a hard act to follow. Uh, wow. Um, so uh, I, I, uh, I run a uh, coffee company that basically works like a brewery in New Orleans in that we just sell kegs of cold brew coffee to clients who have all been affected by this. So we basically had to pivot to selling uh, growlers and a delivery method, and uh, we're actually doing really well. And so it's just you know, there's disaster like there's opportunity in every disaster. We just have to stay nimble and find a way to get out of it and come on top. And uh, it's been really good uh, delivering out because I get to see some people, albeit from a safe distance, and everyone's just you know hunkering down. And you know this this whole time is just really good to just. Everyone needs to think about how fragile and interconnected this world is. And, you know, things like this can really just make you stop and think and be like, hey, we need to be nicer to one another, probably. But uh, I don't know. Um, let's see, I've got, uh, I don't know, just uh, also, so this platform and I wanted to talk about was Beer Me. Uh, a, a fellow Georgia Tech grad uh, developed this web platform for breweries and other clients to do pickup and delivery. I'm going to type it out in the text box right now. But uh, you can see if there's any breweries in your area who are doing that. And if there's not any breweries in your area doing it, then you should maybe get in contact with them because it's a completely free platform right now. These guys did it out of the kindness of their heart and besides the fact that they also own a brewery as well. So they needed to pivot as well. So um, I think that's uh, pretty much all I've got. Uh, I want to thank Amrit for doing this. This has been great. And, uh, if you want to check out riverboatcoffee.com uh, for all of your cold brew coffee needs, I would love to help you out if you're in the New Orleans area. We haven't, we're not quite shipping across state lines. But uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm enjoying this a lot. Bye. Brady, thank you so much. All right, to keep up our energy, we are now heading see a little bit of magic. Who wants some magic? Let's see. Is Mr. Ken there? Ken? Hey everybody, I'm Ken Scott, uh, magician. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Good to see everybody. This is so fun tonight. I uh, hope everybody's enjoying doing well in this and keeping quarantine and staying well and healthy. Uh, my friend Yvonne, hello. There she is, my friend over there. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, I want to show you a bit of magic. You know, I guess you, uh, you heard the stimulus bill passed today and uh, we all got this. A dollar. No. 
look, one dollar. You can try this too. Try it. See if this works for you. Take one dollar, fold in half. That's how you double your money. Fold it half again, half again. And then when you do that, you can actually do this. You can actually fold it one more time like this. Fold it one more time. And when you fold it that many times, you actually get something. It's kind of weird. You get this. Look, you can try this at home yourself. Try it at home. You get one of these. It's a $100 bill. Ooh, yes. Our stimulus in action, right? Ah, but anyway, uh, you know, obviously this has stopped all performances of magic live shows right now for my shows. And I did corporate work. I do birthday parties. Uh, so this is, uh, it stopped us in dead tracks and can't wait to get back and performing for the live audiences again. I love performing. We all do. If you do a live entertainment, it's what we love. It's what we, you know, we can't stay in these little boxes here on these computers. It's tough to do this stuff. Um, but hopefully we'll get back in action soon. Uh, meanwhile, I am doing online uh, magic classes and virtual shows like birthday parties for kids that can't have birthday parties right now. So uh, it's perfect for moms and dads who have kids at home uh, that want to learn some magic lessons. We have magic lessons. They can go to AtlantaMagicSchool.com. Again, AtlantaMagicSchool.com. Or you can visit my website at KenScottMagic.com. And uh, that will give you more information. But again, we're doing virtual magic shows right now online for birthday parties and doing online classes for ages 6 to ages 13. It's really good. I think i got time for one more. If you guys can see this, I'll see if you guys can see this. It's kind of stuff to see from the distance. But if you all will look at one card, look at one card. Everybody look at one card. Don't forget it. You got one card? Don't forget it. Don't forget that card. Good. I'm going to mix them up. Mix them up. Mix them up. I'm going to take one card away. I think this is the one that you picked. Tell me if your card is now gone. Ah, I hope it was. Hey, I'm Ken Scott. Thank you so much for hosting this. You guys are awesome. Peace and love to all of you guys. Stay healthy. Stay well. One more round of applause. One more round of applause right there. Ken, thank you so very much. All right. Continuing with the energy, we are now headed to the live event queen of Atlanta. Her name is Yvonne. Yvonne, are you there for I've been busying myself with something new. Some, I know everybody's talking about um, a certain tiger king, right? You know who my, they, right, they've been talking about the tiger king, this guy. No. You know who my tiger king is? That guy. You guys, I'm so addicted to Fortnite, I can't hardly stand it. I cannot stand it. And I know that my friends' kids are super bored, too, because they're finally saying, yeah, Annie Yvonne, we'll play Fortnite with you. I've never, he's 13, he's never wanted to even talk to me, and now he wants to play Fortnite with me. So I know people are bored. Listen, we're going we're gonna to be okay. we got to just stay busy, right? I, look, I'll play Fortnite online we're social distancing and we're also social dis dancing right we dance all the time you can keep dancing with people you love you can dance with me anytime i'm always dancing i'm also hanging out with my cat and my dog yeah I, I, it, there's a running theme here isn't there cats oh and i have my own mask i don't have any magic tricks but i have my own mask hang on Sorry, I didn't mean to scare the kids. Is this a kid show? What's happening? Listen, I got to get back to work soon or, or, or you know, <laughs> this is all you're going to get. Oh, my gosh. What else? What, what do you want for fun? So dancing, Fortnite, um, oh, puzzles. That's not a puzzle. It's a coloring book, but it's a cat coloring book, and it's super fun. You can't see it because of the book. Whoa. Do you see that green? Whoa, whoa, guys, I'm freaking myself out here. You can also put on wigs, that's fun. You can also have a tambourine, that's fun. Or you can just keep eating. I'm gonna go have some ice cream. You guys have a great night, bye! It wouldn't truly be camping if it wasn't glamping. As you can see here, we have plenty of accessories that Steph and I always will take with us, but, we got some folks that have a little bit better of idea of how to make some parties a 
little more prominent during your time there. All the way from Ohio, here's Perfect Events. Okay, good. So we're here, we're in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, and it's rainy outside. Can go camping out. We also, we provide uh, glamping um, tents. Brent is all in the popcorn. Uh, but since it was rainy outside, we set up our camping indoors. Uh, so I just want to kind of show it to you guys. Oops. What we do, we do rental uh, sleepovers here in Columbus, Ohio. And since we're not working, since we're not, um, you know, we're at home like everyone else, uh, I created a guide. Um, it's a quarantine birthday guide to help kids, you know, that can't really celebrate their birthdays um, to get some ideas, parents to get some ideas to celebrate it at home. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about it and I hope this can help um, and give you guys some information. I also have, have this guide, it's a free guide that you can go on our page, Perfect Events OH, and you can download it for free. So if you have a birthday coming up, uh, the guide, it's very, very good. It has a lot of information. There are 17 ideas uh, to have a quarantine birthday. I know, unfortunately, that's not what we want, but, you know, it's just... Uh, you guys can just find ideas to make your child feel happy. Brittany has a birthday coming up and we're gonna have to celebrate it at home. So one of the ideas that I put on the guide here is uh, to make them feel special, uh, you know, do things that they like during the day, uh, breakfast in bed or a nice brunch, um, maybe a customized gift, like a shirt with their names and their age. Um, Brennan loves Sonic, so maybe a Sonic yeah. shirt. <laughs> um, decorate a table if they're young. Uh, you can decorate. Popcorn. Eat some popcorn. <laughs> um, you can also make it more fun adding balloons to a room. Even though, you know, we know balloons are fun and it's part of a birthday, but you know, you're inside of the home. Um, balloons are very, very good to, to add that to Brandon. No, go, 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 go. Um, and then we have also, um, still telling him the same another thing. idea is to give them, uh, three gifts. Uh, one in the morning, one in the middle of the day, one in the afternoon. You don't need to spend a lot of money on gifts. It's just like little things should, that will, you know, help work. throughout the day to bring fun to it and, you know, make them feel special. Maybe give them After that customized gift in the morning, give them a card in the, in the middle of the day, and then at you night work. you can give them their, their gift. Um, we also uh, have another idea, which is uh, very common, is to have a special meal. And at this time where you can really go out and eat, uh, one of the ideas that we have is like for you to get a subscribe <laughs> box, like HelloFresh or any other uh, subscribe box that you can cook at home. So that way you can cook with the family and still provide a nice meal for your child, uh, whatever they like. Uh, you guys can do something together. There's so many hey ideas. Guys. Brandon, come here, sit here. Uh, we have an online party idea too that you can create. Like here, we're having the Zoom call. Uh, you can have an online party. Um, hey, we, we. Um, we have online games, um, a movie, online games. online games. You like games? Yes, you do. So they can have an online game. Um, you know, play Roblox together, or you or can play or Sonic or Sonic together. Um, movie watching online together. Uh, there's so many ideas um, to try it at home. So if you're interested and you want to know more about the guide. I just gave you a couple ideas, but uh, this guide is on our page, Perfect Events OH. You can download the guide and uh, get those ideas. And we're having a lot of fun with everybody. So those are the tents that we provide. You can have party indoor, outdoors, just a glamping experience for everyone. And I think our time is up. Thank you so much, guys. I have some ties in Atlanta, but also in LA. Now this young lady, I happened to meet in Atlanta almost a decade ago. So I'd love to showcase her. 
Ms. Beth Trufan has created, uh, I guess, a unique way to approach this quarantine efforts. And I'm going to let her share a lot more about it. And her acting personality is going to shine through. Beth, take it away. So I was thinking that maybe you could do something today. I don't know. It's already past noon. But you don't have anything else going on. Well, actually, I'm overthinking a lot of things that I can't control right now. You did that yesterday. Come on. Today is the perfect day to start that poetry collection you always wanted to write about your mom. Yeah, I just feel like I love her so much that I don't even know how to start. Okay, I get that. But... You have to do something or you're going to feel bad tonight. We've been through this. What if I take a shower? No. Don't you understand? I'm trying to get you to be extraordinary. I mean, any breathing human can take a shower, but it takes someone really special to check on that elderly neighbor like you promised and learn French through an app and finally subscribe to The New Yorker. I do want that tote bag they're always peddling. But it's probably on Poshmark. Why don't you call your friend who had a baby? Because then I'd have to hear about the birth. Do any sort of workout class. Well, I slept on my neck wrong last night and now I can't turn it to the left with, no. Uh... <gasps> Volunteer at the cat shelter. Oh, update on that. So Ken from work got a scratch from a feral cat and they took his thumb. Meditate with Deepak? That makes me tachycardic. FaceTime your grandma. She's not the best listener. Start the artist way. You have to let the artist way go. That is never gonna happen. The artist way is never gonna happen. How about I take a shower, but I do everything. Fine, that sounds fine. I'm gonna fix it. Keep in mind, I'm gonna fix it. And we wanted to see what we could do just in the confines of our own house. So if that works, if that works, I don't know. With all of our equipment. And um, yeah, pretty much I decided that I'm gonna start doing a series about just what it's like to just live in your apartment and not see anyone else besides yourself. So if you guys wanna follow that series, um, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. My name is Beth Griffin. So at Beth Griffin. a new episode every single week and see what we can do and try to help entertain people when I'm left to my own devices. So thanks so much for having me. So I don't know if you have an opportunity, but definitely follow Beth. Uh, she kind of, as she described, took multiple camera angles and kind of had multiple of her. Uh, so I think that's very creative, very unique. She's a, a great person to follow, great personality as well. Uh, and we've got another one for you right up next. So moving right along, uh, after Beth, we have a pianist and a musician who's only 15 years old, Mr. Adrian Harold's from the great state of Texas. Take it away, Adrian. Hi, everybody. My name is Adrian Lyles. I'm 15 years old and I'm from Dallas, Texas. So I'm going to sing two songs for you guys. And this first song is called All of Me by John Legend. I hope you enjoy it. What would I do without your Oh, 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 oh,
Hey, 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 he can do it. He can do his on his original. I'm gonna try and fix it for him. Oh, 
I gotta ask you, Adrian. My floor. I'm. I mean, my floor. See, I can't even get words. I'm picking my jaw up off the floor. Boy, boy, I just got chills down my spine. Well, reason for the stream today is absolutely because sure we're in quarantine. I uh, wanted to open our house up to you all and appreciate you letting us into yours. But we are raising the money for the funds for disaster philanthropy. It's a center for disaster philanthropy. Excuse me, and they've got a COVID-19 relief fund. Uh, that they are that they're putting on and this is a specific initiative that we've got with a, a group called zoom memes for quarantines uh, started at uh, 20,000 people and uh, kind of ballooned up and is now over at 450,000 uh, they are keeping people very happy by providing some good won't say clean wholesome fun but some very fantastic memes that I encourage you to take a look at uh, but while we're talking about laughs and some good clean wholesome fun uh, I'd like to introduce uh, somebody who I have gotten to know as a kid uh, somebody who laughs his pants off and everybody else's from L.A. to, uh, I know he's traveled to Italy, he's done shows in the U.K., but for a good laugh and even bigger smile, I want to introduce my good friend from Beverly Hills, California, quarantine in Beverly Hills, California, Mr. Neil Nanda. All right, I can't hear you, but I, I think you're doing good. All right, what's up, guys? My name is Neil Nanda. I am a comedian in Los Angeles. Shout out to Camp Quarantine. You guys are doing an incredibly noble thing. I didn't have any camping gear, but I do got my hot cocoa and vodka. There's vodka and this hot cocoa. Bad mix. Don't do that. Uh, big shout out to everyone who's performed today. You guys were incredible, all you musicians. Uh, thank you, Dr. Goyle, for scaring everybody. And, uh, yeah, and shout out to your dog for heckling you. That was cool. Mm -hmm. And big shout out to the two white people teaching every Indian on here yoga. That was special. I thought that was really special. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play some piano for you guys. I'm going to tell you guys some jokes. So go ahead and get started. This one's pretty timely, so we'll start with a timely one. <clears throat> you guys know that sign in every restaurant bathroom? That says all employees must wash hands. How about everybody just washes their hands? You know? I've never been to dinner with someone and they're like, hey Neil, is that is that doo-doo on your hands? And I'm like, yeah, but I don't work here. So I do live in Los Angeles. I'm dating in Los Angeles, which is fun, but I don't know if I'm dating girls or if I'm just feeding girls. Like, I've been going on a lot of feedings lately. In fact, I've been feeding this girl for about five years. I'm in a committed feeding right now. I am. I'm seeing a white girl, which is fun because we get to do fun stuff like go to Utah. She's not even from there. I've seen the Book of Mormon nine times. My girlfriend is very white, you know. My girlfriend is so white, if I were dying, I would go towards her. And she's converting me. She's actually converted me into a white girl. And I know this because I was at a coffee shop a few weeks ago, and the menu said uh, Greek yogurt parfait with chia seeds. And out loud... 
I said, ooh. I looked down. I was wearing a romper. You know, guys, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Which really confuses all the guys that I fight. Do you guys think chivalry is dead? I don't think chivalry is dead. Because every time I try to open the door for a woman, she looks at me like I'm crazy. Like there's something wrong with me. And I'm like, yo, just let me get the bathroom stall for you. I know a lot of people think because of that joke that I might be a misogynist, but I don't give, give massages. You know, I met my girlfriend online, which is not a very cute story, but my parents have an adorable story. My mom is from a place in India called Vasant Good. My dad is from this place called Punjab. And uh, the way my parents met, it's an adorable story. The way my parents met is uh, they were married. It was love at first wedding. You know, the true story is my grandpa picked out five guys for my mom to choose from. So she wrote each guy a handwritten letter. And then she saw all five of these guys and she went, eeny, meeny, miny, the one in America. Thank you, Mom. I appreciate that. What else I got? Oh, I grew up in the South because uh, my parents loved racism. And uh, I like growing up in the South. I grew up in Atlanta, so I grew up listening to hip-hop. My favorite rap song growing up was Big Pimpin' by Jay-Z. Because one of the lyrics always reminds me of my mom. There was a lyric where he says, I got no patience and I hate waiting. He's a doctor, and he has no patience. No way that Jay Z's a doctor, mom. And I don't think you know English yet. You know? you know, I have been with my girlfriend for about five years. And people keep asking me, "Are you going to get married? Are you guys ready to get married?" I thought about it. And you know, an engagement ring is like what three months' salary. Three months salary for, for an engagement ring? Where am I going to get $90? For real. People also want to know if we're going to have kids. You know? And I don't know. I don't think I want my kids. I found out it costs an average of $250,000 to raise a kid until they're 18. So I'm not going to have kids. I'm just going to have two Ferraris. I'm going to get a black one and a white one tell everybody I adopted, you know, because nobody wants a brown Ferrari. A brown Ferrari doesn't end up working at Google. It's never happened in the history of Ferrari. You know that phrase, you got to spend money to make money? Well, nobody ever acknowledges the fact that you have to have money to spend money. Nobody ever tells you what to do with that money, you know? Like, what if you had $400 just spend it on a samurai sword? Using that to make money would be a felony. I did grow up with Indian parents, man. They're very strict, you know? Especially when it came to education. My dad had a saying. He would always say, uh, B is for bad. And C... Or you got not paper anymore. You have to get down right now. Everybody's leaving okay? right now. F, find a new family. I don't know you. Yeah, yeah. Very strict. I didn't get to do cool stuff when I was a and kid. Then point back to like, me. I asked my dad for a skateboard once for my 14th birthday. He tried to make me a deal. He goes, Okay, you want a skateboard? You want a skateboard? I was like, Dad, you don't know what a skateboard is. Then he tried to make me a deal. He goes, okay, how about this, okay? How about you get straight A's for the rest of your life, and then you don't get a skateboard. You know, I was...
was hanging out with one of my white friends recently, not to brag, and we were at a cash-only restaurant. I didn't have any cash on me. My white friend looked at me and goes, Neil, you know what my dad told me when I was 14? He said that a real man always carries $40 cash on him at all times. I was like, you know what my dad told me about cash when I was 14? No. The whole conversation. My dad would even take my birthday money from me. Every year he would take my birthday money from me. Every year was my birthday. My dad would go, happy birthday to me. Take my money. One year I asked for the money back. I said, Dad, can I have that $40 back? I want to save up for a PlayStation. My dad looked at me and goes, okay, you want a PlayStation? You want a PlayStation? Okay, how about this, okay? How about you go to your room and that is your PlayStation? I got back and my dad... I never taught him how to speak English, so I won, you know. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I'll never forget, we had a neighbor who worked at a penitentiary, but for some reason, my dad called it the penitentiary. I never corrected him. Anytime my dad was mad at me, he do that again, I'm going to take you to the penetration. Okay, right now. All right, I'm going to get out of here on a quick one for you guys. I'm going to tell you about my favorite person I've ever met. I met this guy after a show. He came up to me. He was like, hey, man, that was really funny. I was like, thanks, man. I'm Neil. And he goes, Paginus. I said, what? And he goes, my name is Paginus. I said, what are you saying to me right now? He goes, yeah, man, my name is Paginus. You know, like P-A-G-A-M-A-S. I was like, dude, your name is Pajamas. You know what pageant is? You know what, man? Whatever helps you sleep at night. Thank you guys so much. I'm Neil Nanda. If you want to follow me on social media, you can see my jokes with an actual audience where they're laughing. This is my handle. It, it, it's, some, it's somewhere in here. Oh, there we go. At Neil, not, oh, it's backwards. Spell that backwards. Find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everything. Thank you, guys. Peace. Thank you so much, Neil. Excuse the glasses. Um, <laughs> 2020, what a year it's been. I was supposed to start with that. Um, but <laughs> my family um, is incredible. I love, you know, all the time that I get to spend with them. And being away from them for so long has been hard for me so I just had to build this little fort myself and sometimes I need to get away from the boyfriend get away from you know the husband or whoever's in the house with you um but yeah so you know your parents your family they're just a phone call away uh my dad on the live stream today
thanks so much. The best part about this, I think, is whether you're camping outside, like we love to do, especially in this 83 degree weather here in Atlanta as it was today, but I hope some of you folks that we've talked to uh, people in Ohio and Chicago where I know it's still snowing in DC, really what we are trying to do with Camp Quarantine is ensure that there's no obstacles. The point is break up the monotony. Steph, thanks so much for setting up the floor indoors. I can't like really tell you what that really meant to me to go camping as a kid. So I hope you all are using these time, these weeks, these hopefully not months, uh, to, to spend time with your family and do things you maybe not, uh, may not have. One of the things I love about hostel and hospitality and what it really means to me is in these times of adversity, it's all about not necessarily what you know, but maybe what you can teach yourself, that apprehension, and also all of those people kind of as who you know. Many of these people on these, uh, on these streams, as I mentioned, I've known for a decade. Neil has just been blowing it out of the water. You're going to see him blow up on Comedy Central real soon, if not already. Uh, but, you know, all these are friends of mine and people that I have no problem calling upon. And I know you guys have that same group and network and community and ecosystem to support you, too. So during this time, I just want everybody to be on fire. We're creating something right over here. Speaking of on fire... We've done events a number of times. Shout out Golden Soiree if you guys are watching or people that know that brand. We've got a guy that we have always been trusted and counted on. From San Diego, California, here is DJ Mr. E. Rob Ortiz. Take it away, bud. What's up? I go by the name DJ Mr. E. I just want to make you move a little bit. What up, though? This Sean Don, and I'm rocking with my dog, DJ Mr. E. Get up, pack it in, let me begin. I can't know when that'll mean that's a sin. I won't fuss like a pumpkin at a backup. Try and play the role, and you're the whole crew will act up. Get up. 
Stand up, come on, throw your hands up if you got a feeling. Jump up towards the ceiling. Y'all gon' make me lose my mind. Up in here, up in here. Y'all gon' make me go all out. Up in here, up in here. Y'all gon' make me act the fool. Up in here, up in here. Y'all gon' make me lose my cool. Up in here, up in here. I got one true. Baby, I'll stop. Baby, I'll stop. Baby, I'll stop. Hold on. Don't be me outside. Don't be me outside. Don't be me outside. These are my two days. Don't be me outside. Tyson and Kawhi. I want to thank y'all for joining me. I'm here every day, daily, 3, 6, and 9 on Periscope. I'll add this. Keep an eye on Rob. Rob's streams go live at 6, 9, and midnight Eastern Time, 3, 6, and 9 Pacific. But man, follow that guy. His energy. He's a good family man, too. I love you, Rob. I appreciate it. Uh, we're coming up on the end of our stream here. We got one, one last reminder. Bit.ly slash fund for disaster. Uh, I want to remind you all that I really am very appreciative for you guys sticking with us. To our participants, a huge, huge, huge round of applause. They did this pro bono off the goodness of their hearts. So we're going to, if you enjoy what you saw, like a little bit of like variation, want to be featured, shoot us a message, shoot us a message. Shoot us a message. Camp Camp quarantine. Quarantine. Uh, and, uh, and we'll and be back, we'll be back Friday. Friday. Friday.